Martin Lappin here for Heatmaster SS, and much to the dismay of some, obviously I'm back. But anyways, one of the previous videos you've seen me starting this, and this is a good trick to know. But if your spring was like ours, we went from practically setting a new record low to a new record high in the space of a week. So instead of letting it go clear out and burning up all your wood and coal bed, just flip the power switch off and let it go out on its own. And that relights much easier later on. And I don't know why, I just can't seem to stress this enough. But being a gas frying stove, you absolutely must have a coal bed at all times. And to keep your coal bed, you can't be burning chunks that just barely fit in the door. Um, that's on the smallest side. My general rule of thumb, if I can't pick it up from one end with one hand, it needs to be popped down a little bit. And I also do that as my wife does stack all the wood. I don't want to... Uh, get her pissed off at me because they're all big pieces so a nice selection of splits to uh, keep your coal bed going and like I've said over and over your coal bed is like the spark plugs in a gas engine if you have poor plugs you're gonna have poor performance and like I said before it doesn't matter what brand or where it was made you have to have a coal bed now in the 200 and 400 I used to have, that was the standard way to put your wood in. And I run my G7000 like that most of the winter and had no issues. However, for first time users, I really think going with the factory recommended side to side or your cut ends towards the sides, however you want to look at it does work better for first time users and there's two ways to do this as well um, a g400 g200 and g7000 i take my poker and i keep the ash bed loose all your ashes find their way into the bottom of the stove then however the recommended way from the factory is do not disturb the coal bed just keep adding wood and like I was told by one of the engineers, he burns primarily soft maple, tulip poplar, and jack pine. And he'll add more wood anytime it gets to the bottom of the door frame. Just keep adding it. Now, the issue is, if you're never stirring up the coal bed, eventually your ashes are going to start building up. Do not let them cover the bottom of the panels. That makes for all kinds of problems later on. And the other thing you'll have, this is from Ash, and I've been told soft maple and tulips also does a lot of this. But the minerals in the wood get warm enough to get sticky, then it sticks to the ash, and then the ash starts sticking to itself, and you get these clumps. Which isn't a huge deal, but you don't want them building up so much to where they could fall over and plug your nozzle. Not going to be a good time. So, if you're going to do the don't disturb the coal bed at all method of operation, I would suggest getting a steel wheelbarrow. And once a week, whatever day you have time to mess with it, shovel the top out, put everything in the wheelbarrow. Then you could use like one of those pitchforks the um, horse people use to clean the horse apples out of the sawdust in the stalls. Or I even thought if I could find the coal shovel we used to have, I was going to take the plaz cutter and cut some slits in it to let the ash through while keeping the coals. But sort through it best you can, put the coals back in, and put some fresh wood on top and get her going. Uh, forgive all the short clips run together. Uh, all week it's been like 10 degrees hotter than a sweaty armpit. And of course now I got the prerequisite summer cold to go with it. So short clip, stop, try to hack along up, make another one. Anyways, got the stove powered up. Gonna hit the cold start.
and like I said this works extremely well in the shoulder seasons like here it was one night practically almost set a new record low then in a few days we're setting record highs so instead of leaving it run all the time just shut the power switch off and leave it alone until you need it again so it's not been even five minutes and it's for all practical purposes like it was never shut off and we're going to run this for a bit and then clean it up be done with it but while we're right here you can hear that gasification roar it just sounds the gas igniting as it goes through the nozzle there's a bypass open nothing going through bypass closed So it's been roughly 10 minutes or so. Water temperature has already come up 15 degrees. Already added a few more pieces. So there you go. A little bit of a combination on restarting it and how to actually run it. So. This has been Martin Lapin with Heatmaster SS. And if you've seen my other videos, you know how I normally end these.